Um, Larry Lance, is, it's mentioned that he has passed away and we hate uh, for that loss. And our heart goes out to Beverly and her family. Um, services will be at Cornerstone Thursday at 10 a.m. Is that right? Okay. Also, Latin A. Smith, Mary True's mom, passed away. And uh, the, uh, all the information as far as her services are in this handout. One thing, or two, a couple of things that are not mentioned in here. Uh, Becky Watson had kidney stones and was home this week. Uh, so anybody that's had a kidney stone, I know you can sympathize with her. And also, I don't know if everyone knows that RC last last Friday, I believe we got word that he had uh, fallen and broken his hip. And then later we got another text from Tony that said that he had broken his arm as well. And so we want to keep RC in our prayers. I think he's had surgery, but I have not heard an update on that. Um, Another thing, uh, birthdays, the only birthday we have is Truman Reese on this paper, so we're grateful for Truman, and I know he's had surgery in the past, and uh, pray for his recovery and a happy birthday to him. I've invited Gary House to uh, talk just a short uh, minute for about uh, tonight's Plainview Night of Prayer. Gary, would you come up and speak? I doubt anyone would disagree with the fact that our world is full of chaos. It's full of division and hatred, disease, There's so many things going on. This is not what we would call normal. And there's one source behind it, let's be very clear, and that is Satan himself. He has taken a hold of our land, of his people. We have organized an evening of prayer. An evening of prayer to call upon our Maker God, our Creator God, to heal His land and His people. The basis for this comes from Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 2, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, verses uh, verse 6, excuse me, verse 14, where he says, and if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We've organized an evening of prayer, one hour of your time, that we would come together and we would call upon our sovereign and almighty God that he would heal our land. We have allowed Satan to become, come into our land and in our lives. And for that, we need to repent. Now, I'm not saying and I'm not condemning you individually, but we as a people have allowed things that we should not have. And because of that, we need to turn. We need to turn our focus. We need to turn our attention and our full allegiance to the God who created us. So join us this evening, if you would. I would love to have everyone from, from, this, from this audience, from anyone that is listening, anyone in, throughout the entire community. This is Pray Plainview. It is not any one church, any one denomination, all are God's people that we need to come together and lift our voices as one. So please join us. Please join us at 7 o'clock this evening at the YMCA building on the south side. It'll be open air. Social distancing will be, uh, will be required. And if you, want to, if you want seating, please bring your own seating. But please be with us this evening as we lift our voices in what I hope is the first of many such events where we turn our attention and our full focus 
to lifting our voices to God. Uh, Brent has asked me if I would open a, the service with a prayer. I am honored to do so. So would you bow with me now? Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, sovereign of the universe and creator of all. We stand before you this morning humbled that you would consider us. And we marvel at the love that you had to pay such a great price to save us. We are your children. We are your offspring. And we look to you as our father, as a child would look to their father, for the strength, the solace, the comfort, the guidance that we need so desperately right now. I pray, dear Lord, that you take our hand and you lead us through each day, and especially this day. As we worship you, O Lord, help us to worship you with all that we are. Help us to cry from our very soul your name and proclaim your majesty and your sovereignty and your love. Bless all those who have a part in our service this morning. May the songs that we sing come straight from the heart. May the words that Brother Steve brings to us be inspired by your very, by your very thought. Use us, Father. Use us as your tools to serve us and to help each other. May we worship you, Lord, with all that we are. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and we'll worship our Father in song. <clears throat> Hear the holy roar of God resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of his great love. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. His enemies will run for sure. The church will stand, she will endure. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Our God is a God who saves. 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 Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Let God arise. You may be seated. 
Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. And I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, and I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, Lord, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And step by step you'll lead me, Lord. And I will follow you all of my days. You are the sunshine and I am a candle. You are the mountains and I am a hill. You are the ocean and I am a river. And never quite still, winding and swirling and never quite still. You are the canyon and I am a crevice. You are the heavens and I am a star. You are the thunder and I am a whisper. Quietly longing to be where you are. Quietly longing to be where you are. You are a mighty God. Your deeds are so awesome. Mighty God, I stand amazed. You are a mighty God, I worship you only. You are so mighty and worthy of praise. 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 You are the the sunshine and I am a candle. You are the mountains and I am a hill. You are the ocean and I am a river. Winding and swirling and never quite still. Winding and swirling and never quite still. You are a mighty God. Your deeds are so awesome. Mighty God, stand amazed. You are a mighty God, I worship you only. You are so mighty and worthy of praise. 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 Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful. When your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. 
And blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. And blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory name you give and take away you give and take away my heart will choose to say Lord blessed be your name you give and take away you give and take away my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. So blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own. Here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Well, good morning. It's great to see you here. It's great to see our numbers better this week than they were last. 
One thing I do hate is following R.N. Hopper, though, and giving the Lord's Supper talk because he did a fantastic job last week. I tend to be a really, really practical person. If you don't believe it, ask Cindy. She'll tell you. It drives her crazy sometimes. When I think about this, though, what are we here for? What is our purpose this morning? Well, what does Scripture tell us our purpose is this morning? We're to come together to encourage each other to love and good deeds. That's what our function is this morning. Sounds like a challenge, doesn't it, in today's time when we think about what's going on. If you flip on the news for just a little bit this week, any time this week, you can hear about all the mayhem that's going on and all of the strife and all the problems and all of the destruction. But scriptures remind us our battle is not just here. It's not among men. But it's powers and principalities behind the scene that are a part of this big picture. So what's the answer? Well, let's go to Scripture. Psalms chapter 2. First verse kind of reminds me of exactly what's going on when it says, Why are the nations in an uproar? and the peoples devising a vain thing. And the kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers take their counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. They say, let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Sound familiar? A scripture where Paul speaks to that and uh, the Ephesian, I mean, the uh, um, Romans, in Romans, he says that. He speaks of that's Christ. That's him right there. Ask of me, and I will surely give the nations as thine inheritance, and the very ends of the earth as thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt shatter them like earthenware. A mental image that God gives us. It doesn't matter how big and beautiful the pot that mankind might make how ornate it might be in the kingdom that man might devise in opposition to God. God has given his son the iron rod that will shatter it in a heartbeat. Now therefore, O kings, show discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Do a homage to the, God, to the son, lest he become angry and you perish in the way. For his wrath may soon be kindled. And this is the encouragement right here. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. As we get ready to take the Lord's Supper this morning, that's exactly what we celebrate. We have been given refuge in the Son. So whatever else is going on does not matter. It's not eternal. It will be shattered by the Son. Let's, let's bow. Father, we thank you so much that you loved us to give us your son. You sent him to this earth as a man to live among us. We didn't have to seek you out. You sought us out. You've brought us to you. You've called us your children. All praise and glory and honor to the Son of God as we celebrate his body as we take this bread. Jesus' name, amen. I think it's human nature to think the times we live in are the toughest times there have ever been. 
I hate to tell you folks, but this really isn't much. This really isn't anything. When you think back to Paul and his mission work and his life and the things that he went through, when he wrote to the Philippians, he's in jail in Rome and has been for an extended period of time. And we all know what his fate's going to be, right? What does he write to the Philippians over and over and over? I'll just quote chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. And that's what we do this morning as we take this Lord's Supper. Let's bow one more time. Father, we thank you again for Jesus Christ that we are the winners. We have total victory. We conquer the world because of your Son, because of your great love. Sin has no hold on us. Death has no claim to us. Help us to remember that, Father, and rejoice always. And again I say, rejoice. Amen. One more quick encouragement for you. I am absolutely not a huggy person. Cindy even has a picture of me and the two boys uh, that she took one Christmas time, I think. And if y'all know Clint, he's moderately huggy. If you know Dan, he's extremely huggy. In the picture, you can see Dan is just leaned in like this and Clint's kind of leaned in and I'm doing this, leaning away from both of them as best I possibly can. That's my nature. I never thought I would miss hugs. But I miss the chance to hug you, each and every one right now. Consider yourself hugged today, okay? Brothers and sisters, it's a tradition here. We normally take up a collection. Those plates, I believe, are at the back. So if you will, uh, when you have opportunity, and if you have the means, we'd ask that you make your contributions today. Bow with me as we ask them prayer of blessing. Father, we thank you so much that you bless us in so many ways, and we thank you that you give us this opportunity to love people by giving. We pray wisdom on this congregation. We pray wisdom on our elders. We pray courage on our elders and our members here, Father. Help us to be wise in the things that we do and have the courage to do those things to glorify our Master Jesus Christ. Help us always to love each other as you've loved us. In his name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Please don't text me. My phone's up here, but don't text me. Sorry, I got busy this week. And I need to take care of some stuff. I, I would have done this sooner, but I was doing salt. I probably should have used something other than a white plate, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you for whoever just texted me. Eight. Ten. All right, so there's nine over here, one over here. All right, one, one, two, three, four. Oh, Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. What do you elders, preachers, deacons, Bible class teachers, you hypocrites? 
Uh, the word hypocrite means actor. The word hypocrite means someone who's putting on a really good show, trying to make it look like everything is good and everything is fine, trying to make it look like they are very religious in this case. Well, how do you do that? Woe to you, teacher of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. You give a tenth of your spices. If you, if you carry that to the letter of the law, you're giving one out of every ten particles of spice. He's telling them you're spending a lot of time counting out seeds or pepper flakes or grains of salt. And in doing so, man, you look really good. How are you doing today, Steve? Well, I, I'm pretty good. I, I've been busy this week counting out all my spices so I can tithe. Because I want to make sure that I give to God what is God's. And so I've been spending a lot of time counting my salt. Well, what about the people next door that don't have stuff they need to eat? Oh, well, I, I'll, I'll try to get to them after I'm done with counting my spices. I mean, after I've got salt done and I'm on pepper now, so I've only got 34 more to go. You hypocrite. You hypocrite. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides. You strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Now, if you can't smile about the picture of straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel, if you can't smile at the absurdity of trying to swallow a camel, go find a sense of humor somewhere. Jesus has a funny bone. And what he's saying is, look at the absurdity of what you're doing. Notice what you've focused on. And, and the reality of what you're doing. Because, oh, you look, you look so good. You look so good. But you've missed the whole point. You've missed it all. I understand this. Not from a, I've studied the Greek, I've done a lot of research. But I understand this because I've been a hypocrite. I understand this because I wanted you to see me looking good. I didn't want you to, to see me and think, Man, Steve's focused on the wrong stuff. Man, Steve's, he's worried about all the, Steve's doing, I, I want you to see me and I want you to see, man, Steve's doing good. He's a super religious guy. And the truth is, you, you've been right there with me doing a lot of the same things. But you see, we've got to change. We talked last week about the Garden Street that we were fond of, the Garden Street that, that we love. That, that Garden Street has died. And the good news is that there is power in the resurrection. And the res resurrection looks different. And the resurrection acts different. And so we're going to talk this morning, we're going to begin talking this morning about some things that are very important to God. Not just for the church, but going back way, 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 way back into history, 
things that have always been important to God. And Jesus talks about them or lists them right here. Justice. Mercy. Faithfulness. How many of you know what justice is? There's a large debate in our country right now about what is just and about what justice is. We have two we have two parties that are arguing about what justice is supposed to look like. And we have defined for ourselves what is just. And Jesus really doesn't care about our definition of justice. And Jesus does not care about what the political parties say justice looks like. Because he has something else in mind. Because here's true justice. God's law. God's law that cannot be changed. God's law that is established for all nations throughout all times, throughout all places. It hasn't changed. In fact, if you start looking in the Old Testament, I challenge you, just start looking in the Old Testament about what God says to the nations. He's not judging them according to their laws. You ever notice that? He doesn't judge the nations according to their laws. He doesn't judge them according to how well they keep the laws that they make. Those are man-made rules. He judges the nations according to His law. And He says, if you will keep My laws, not, not a Jewish system of religion, but if you will keep My law, I will protect you. I will be your God. Not just for Israel. My law. So we need to think very carefully about justice. We need to think about what this is. When, when Jesus talks about you've neglected justice because we could be in the same boat. Mercy. You've neglected mercy. That one is so easy to neglect, isn't it? I neglect mercy because I have a system of justice that I want to follow. The rules say this, therefore I can't be merciful to you. If you were following the rules, you wouldn't need the mercy that you're asking me for right now. And so because of my view of justice, because of my understanding of, about what is right and wrong, and, and we're going to come back and visit this, by the way, in the near future, this understanding about what's right and wrong. Do you know where that started? This view of, where right, of what's right and what's wrong? It started way back in a garden. We read about it early on in Genesis. And God tells the two humans that are in the garden, there may be humans outside the garden, I don't know. I have a running debate with myself on this, and some days I think there were, and some days I think there weren't. Scripture does not tell us. But he tells the two humans that are in the garden, I've got two trees that are in the middle of the garden. One is the tree of life. You're welcome to it. The other one, you need to stay away from it. In fact, if you even touch it, you're going to die. Do you remember the name of that, that tree? the knowledge of what's right and what's wrong? Mama. 
the knowledge of what's right and what's wrong stands opposed to the tree of life. The knowledge of good and evil is the antithesis of life. And it's in the middle of the garden, and God says, there's two trees, one you can eat from and one you can't. And we've been judging right and wrong ever since, and guess what? It's a life stealer. This doesn't give you permission to go sin. It just means we need to think carefully about justice. And we need to think carefully about mercy. And we need to think carefully about this notion of right and wrong. And we need, we need to submit more fully to God. Justice. Mercy. Faithfulness. Now, I want to go, I want to go back in Scripture... I told Kevin, I said, this week has been a downloading of stuff that's been very powerful. Um, I thought it was for one sermon, and as the, the week went on, I realized I can't keep them here this long. <laughs> so we're not going to do the full sermon today. That's good news. Um, we're going to continue looking at this for, for a little bit. Micah chapter 6. You're familiar with this chapter. You're familiar with verse 8 at least. The chapter starts with a calling Israel to a court case. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear mountains the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He's lodging a charge against Israel. That's not a good place to be. If God is lodging a charge against you, guess what? He's probably right. There's really not a whole lot you have to say at that point. He's got a case, and he's willing to bring it before the mountains. And he asks them, What have I done to you, my people? How have I burdened you? He gives a little bit of history of how he has taken care of them. And the response begins in verse 6. With what shall I come before the Lord? Guilty, right? The Lord has a case against me. The Lord has asked me questions. And, and in the asking of the question, I realize I am guilty. What should I come before the Lord? With what should I come and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Is there a guilt offering I can offer? Are, are there thanksgiving offerings that I can offer? Would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? How about my firstborn? This is desperate, people. Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. And the response is, He showed you, O Israel, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly? to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I want to submit to you a picture. You're going to have to imagine it this week, and we'll fill it out some more next week. But I want to submit to you a picture of what this looks like. Uh, those of you that have been here a while, you know that Jackie used to use the illustration of the temple to talk about how God dwells within us. There's another illustration there in the temple. Uh, and it is the Ark of the Covenant. And I want you to picture the Ark of the Covenant in your mind. Uh, however it is that you picture it. I've, I've drawn it out right here. If you, that's my picture. Um, picture the Ark of the Covenant. A box that's emptied out that can carry stuff with a lid on top. On that lid, there are angels on either side facing one another with their wings outstretched, touching, the wingtips are touching each other. 
Now look inside the box. Inside the box are three things. There is a jar of manna. A jar of what God provided in the wilderness every day for the Israelites to eat. I know, six days a week. Every day they got manna while they're in the wilderness. Jesus later on is going to say, yeah, you thought that manna was good. I'm here. I am the manna. Okay, pretty good picture. There's Aaron's staff that budded uh, to show that the other guys were wrong. He was right. I haven't figured out what to do with that one yet, so just hang on to that one. You can walk around with it. That'll be fine. And then there's the tablets with the commandments. The ten words that God spoke. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Uh, Moses is reminding the people of those ten words. And, he's, and when he gets done reminding them of the ten words, he said, and he said, he, that's all he said. <laughs> he didn't add anything else. Those tablets are in there. That is a picture of justice. Those laws are a picture of justice. Now, you know that we can't follow the law perfectly. How does God deal with that? On top of that box are the angels. And that place in between the angels is called the mercy seat. And when God would meet with the high priest, the picture is that God resides in the mercy seat. The law is down here in the box. And on top of that is mercy. I think that's a pretty good way to understand how God deals with us. Because he knows we can't keep that. He still calls us to it, but he treats us with mercy. And then, extending out from the box that is the Ark of the Covenant are poles. The poles aren't really fancy things. The poles are very utilitarian. They're so that the Ark can be moved from place to place. And that's all they're there for, so the Ark can be moved from place to place. And the Israelites did that. They carried the ark, this representation of God, this place where God would meet with them. They carried it from place to place. They were commanded to take it whenever they saw the cloud move. And there are a whole lot of steps on how to start moving stuff. After they got settled and the ark had sat in place for a while, in the tabernacle, and the tabernacle hadn't moved, and people hadn't seen the cloud to say to move it. They got into a battle with the Philistines. And they said, hey, grab the ark. We'll take the ark up, and we'll win the battle. And it didn't go so well. I got to thinking about that this week. Micah says, act justly, Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God. Walking humbly with God means going where God leads us, not where we want to lead God. And so I want to leave you with a picture this week to carry with you. I want to leave you with a picture of the Ark of the Covenant as you begin to wrestle with some weightier things. Now, he says, yeah, you still need to do the other things. You need to do the religious thing of tithing. That's what he tells the hypocrites in Matthew 23. But you need to understand the more important things. And you need to practice them. Justice, mercy, and he's going to call it faithfulness. So I want to give that to you. And I want to ask you to wrestle with the Ark of the Covenant this week with the idea of justice and mercy and walking humbly with God, faithfulness. I want to ask you to begin praying. What does it look like 
for me. For me. To live as Christ would have me to live. What does it mean for me to live and not be a hypocrite? How can I do that this week? Questions of justice, mercy, walking humbly with God. I want to offer a prayer now, and then after that, we're not. Don't jump up and run off. I, I'm going to ask you to stand, um, and I'm going to ask you to say some things. Last week, uh, we talked about. It depends on me, and I ask you all to say it depends on me. And some of y'all did. That was pretty cool. I want to ask you to do a similar thing this week. Uh, if you would like to participate, you can. I'm not going to force you to. Your salvation does not rest on you saying what's going to be on the screen. I'm just going to invite you to do that. If you have a need today, uh, if you're struggling with something today, we want to help you. Uh, we want to walk with you. We want to pray with you. Uh, but we want to serve you. So if you have a need today, let somebody know. Uh, let us know how we can help you. If, if you need to be baptized today, if you're ready for that, um, I think we got water. <laughs> Nancy cleaned out the baptistry this week, and we have clean water. So it's, it's even that much better. So if you need to be baptized uh, today, let us know. Well, we will certainly uh, help you with that today. So let's have a prayer, uh, and then I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Father, I come to confess that uh, I have been more focused on the gnats than the camel. I come to confess that I've been a hypocrite. I've been concerned about how others see me and not about doing the things that you have asked me to do. And Father, I am willing to change. I am willing to live according to your law. But Father, you know the mercy that I need. Not only to receive, but also to give to others. Because I want to judge them. I want to look at them and make judgments so that I feel superior to them. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want to live according to your law, according to your mercy. Not just receiving, but how I view others and how I interact with others. And I want to walk humbly with you this week. To go the places that you lead me to. To hear the things that you would have me hear to say the things that you would have me say and to do the things that you've called me to do. Father, I pray for those that hear this message that we would all be people seeking justice and mercy and walking humbly with you, faithfulness. That we might bring your kingdom to this earth. Father, I'm humbled that you would ask us to do this. that you would put a plan in motion that depends on me. So help me this week to depend on you. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. Paul's going to put some words on the screen. They're very simple. And they're very profound. The first one says, Christ is depending on me. And the second one says, I am depending on Christ. I'm going to ask you to recite that with me. Um, if this is how you're going to live this week. So if you're willing, Christ is depending on me, and I am depending on Christ. Thank you again for being here. We're going to dismiss starting with this section, uh, and then you are free to go.